Howdy folks. So this is just a quick follow-up video to the uh, last video I made on this uh, Compact QVision 210 monitor. So uh, in the previous video I just showed how uh, the CRTs have got incredibly weak emission and uh, starting to do all the blooming and streaking effects that you sort of get um, when a CRT has reached end of life. And normally that would be the end of this, but uh, I wanted to just sort of have a play around with this thing uh, before I uh, ultimately scrap it. And of course, since it is scrap, I can do whatever I want. So uh, I took the top off of it. And uh, this is, uh, of course, what's inside. Um, nothing uh, terribly in interesting in this. Um, it's just pretty standard CRT of the era. Of course, we've got our uh, high tension lead here. Of course, don't want to be touching that. Uh, it's a Hitachi tube, as I mentioned before, Shadow Mask CRT. Um, we've got a pretty decent sized flyback, and uh, it's all quite standard. It's all very well built. Um, I mean, it d definitely would survive uh, probably several decades more had it not been for the, uh, the CRT uh, just having quite a bit of use. But anyway, what I've done is on the neck board, I have actually disconnected the uh, heater supply. So I've got these two wires running out uh, of the uh, the monitor and those two uh, I've connected up to my um, just my lab bench power supply so in this case just uh, my BK Precision um, 1687B which a lot of people ask me about this thing so this is just a uh, just a lab supply so um, anyway I'll just turn that on it's not actually connected at the moment and uh, I think you can see where I'm gonna go with this what I want to do is I want to basically power the heater um, with my own supply. So right now uh, I can turn the monitor on and it'll come up and uh, you won't see anything on the screen because there's no heater supply. And of course without a heater um, you have no emission. So what I can do is I can actually connect this up. The terminals are on the back and you can see the current should go up to about 300 milliamps and we should start to see the image appear as the uh, it heats up. So now the cathodes have heated up and this is the output that we get. And so this is at sort of a normal brightness level and of course if we crank the brightness then uh, we start to see uh, all the effects. So if I bring up um, a window for example there you can see of course all the blooming and the streaking as you would sort of expect to see. So what, um, what people used to do uh, in the, this was more common, of course, back when CRTs were in their heyday, 60s um, and earlier, um, you know, CRTs were something that was where they were still manufactured. And if your TV got, it was usually TVs, of course, no, no one really had computer monitors back then. If your TV got into this state, you could, you had really three options. You could either buy a new TV or you could get the CRT rebuilt, where they physically cut the uh, cut the neck off and replace the color guns, and then reseal it and revacuum the tube. So they they basically reuse part of the tube and replace another part. So those were cheaper. Um, or you could, um, and of course you could buy a new tube for your old TV. I should mention that. So there's technically four options. And the last option, which was um, something that a lot of people did, especially if they kind of wanted to just postpone buying a new TV for a while was they bought what's called a brightener and all a brightener was was just a, basically a transformer that you inserted in between the CRT heater filament and the power supply the power transformer and it was in itself just a transformer and it just boosted the heater voltage so that uh, of course it would draw more current it would get hotter and of course if you heat the cathode in a vacuum tube hotter then whatever emissive material is left will uh, electrons will be liberated at a higher rate and therefore you'll get a higher cathode current. So that's what I want to show right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of emulate having a brightener here and I'm just going to basically turn up the voltage and I want to I want to see what happens to the picture as I do that. What happens to the brightness, what happens to the contrast, all that stuff. So um, I'm just going to start out by uh, cranking it to uh, it's 6.3 volts nominal so I'm just going to go to 7 volts and I can already see an improvement. It's gradual of course because it has to heat up. So let's go to 7.5 volts. Current is still 300 milliamps. You can see it's cleaning up actually quite nicely. And if we just nudge it a little bit higher, maybe maybe 8 volts. 
and at 8 volts that looks that looks actually pretty good and you can see, you can see why people would buy this right you just buy this device it's a transformer it's relatively cheap at the time you just install it it's something that you know someone even someone who doesn't know uh, anything about electronics could install this and you know oh it looks good now and of course uh, the problem with this of course is it accelerates the death of the tube uh, quite dramatically and uh, you also run the risk of course when you're when you're running the the filament at such a high voltage just like you run any light bulb at a high voltage it'll burn out very quickly because the tungsten will start to vaporize and horrible horrible things will happen so what I would normally do of course is I would actually turn the brightness down because it's now way too bright and uh, this is actually the normal brightness and uh, I don't know how this is going to come out on camera but this actually doesn't look too bad the contrast is there I can see what I can see the trees I know I was using that as a, a sort of a, a contrast point uh, in the uh, the previous video just contrasting that with uh, what uh, for example my my LCD on my laptop displays again this is uh, still better um, but uh, it's definitely uh, definitely not uh, not what it was before and of course I can uh, of course do the same thing so uh, if I let's say crank the brightness all the way and I then reduce the voltage back to 6.3 volts as the heater cools down we should start to see all the blooming come back and uh, of course the picture gets quite a bit dimmer and as I reduce the heater voltage further let's say I drop it to 5 volts uh, a good healthy tube will actually continue to work um, properly at 5 volts that's a uh, just a quick and easy way to tell it how 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 healthy a tube is if you don't actually have a tube tester you can actually just drop the heater voltage on the tube and see how it performs at 5 volts a really healthy tube should you shouldn't see no no discernible difference between 6.3 and 5 volts uh, just because there's so much emissive material on the cathode and it's actually incredibly dim now uh, it's difficult to really showcase that and of course that's with the brightness all the way up if I drop the brightness back down of course um, it just it's just black at this point it's very very different in brightness and uh, we can keep going I mean this is this is this is really not good for uh, a, a filament by or uh, a cathode by the way because uh, what you'll end up getting is if you run the if you run the tube with a very low heater voltage you're, you're gonna end up with what's called cathode poisoning which is a very very bad bad phenomenon so this is four volts and it's getting incredibly dim um, let's go three volts I don't care about this tube, so I'm not really worried about uh, cathode poisoning or anything like that. You can run, uh, you can run these, uh, you can run CRTs in any other tube at a slightly lower voltage. Um, in fact, that can prolong the life of the filament. However, um, a significant under voltage like this uh, will kill it uh, real fast. And uh, I wonder what voltage I can go down to and still be able to see anything at all. So we're at two volts, and you, everything is very gradual, of course, because it's all thermal. All right? you're, you're, you're physically cooling down a component in that tube, and it's, it may fade out completely at two volts. I can still barely make something out there. But uh, yeah, we'll crank it all the way back up to, uh, I think eight volts is kind of the sweet spot. But yeah, um, so that's uh, that's that's just maybe a little bit of a history lesson and kind of another interesting play around with this thing. So yeah, I uh, I, I may dick around with this a little bit further. I'm not quite sure what else I want to do with it, but uh, any experiments I have, I kind of want to do them on this before I get rid of it completely. Like I'm going to be doing some experimenting with hydrogen peroxide to try and uh, leach the bromine out of this plastic, just because I, I have some other products I'd like to do that with and. Of course, uh, I, I want to test it out on something like this uh, before I do no, doing my, my my good <laughs> good equipment. So anyway, I don't want to ramble on too long. Anyway, hopefully that was uh, that was interesting. Thanks for watching.